Hi everybody, this is C.O.G. I'm Red and... I am Orange. And today we are talking about Katamari Damacy Reroll for the Nintendo Switch. Let's just get into it. What's Katamari? Katamari is this really weird like cult hit game that was originally released on the PlayStation 2 but now was remastered because so many people enjoyed it. Essentially what this game is about is collecting a bunch of items onto this Katamari which I don't know what the fuck that is. Do you know what a Katamari is? I think it's a made up term. <laughs> I do too. It's probably so some Japanese thing that I, I have no clue about. So you roll this thing around and just collect these items and you try to make your Katamari as big as you possibly can. There's a little bit more of a story to it, which I think we'll get into later, but it's just a really fun kind of cute little game. What did you think? It's definitely cute and from the start it's, it's humorous. It's unique all around, especially with the controls. The way you control your Katamari ball, the way you roll it around is with both your analog sticks. You're not using just one and I compare it to like pushing a shopping cart. So as long as you're pushing forward, you're going forward and if you're pushing your left hand forward and pulling your right hand back just imagine that with your analog you're going to be turning left or right depending on that order i think of it like a omnidirectional shopping cart i actually really enjoyed the controls in this i thought it was cool because it's very clearly simulates both hands with the different analog sticks and i really liked that i also liked at the very beginning you're just immediately introduced to these controls just by the title screen and it's pretty cool you tend to appreciate these things when you see how like they're implementing the gameplay not just in the game but even just selecting your save file or whatnot that's fun with that said i think we could get a little bit into the story it's not too deep or anything. Yeah, the story starts out with you as the prince. Your father is the king of all cosmos and he is gigantic and he's probably interdimensional. But it starts off with him sort of drunkenly moving about the cosmos and knocking out every star in his path. And then after that's done and he's seemingly woke from his stupor, it's up to you, his son or the prince to rebuild the stars in the kingdom, at least in the sky, because Earth is sort of having a freak out with having no stars or a moon or anything <laughs> so it's, it's your job to pick up after your deadbeat plus your dad is just a total asshole yeah he's a dick and everything that your dad says is like really ominous like we we don't think you're doing that well <laughs> it's really funny i don't think he says anything positive about you ever throughout the entire game unless you like go way above what they ask which is very rare that that's yeah. gonna happen very rare that it happens and even then it's still kind of a backhanded compliment yeah exactly <laughs> but that's the story for the game and it's sort of the humor that carries the game forward it makes you want to play more besides having a really satisfying gameplay loop where you're constantly collecting items that are getting bigger and bigger the story and the shit that they're having you pick up it just gets funnier and funnier as you go through there's just something inherently funny about picking up people into this ball like they, they just start screaming You know? scream and every item you pick up's got a name so it's like a pick up girls or like people swimming and they're called like bikini girls yeah i noticed <laughs> that <laughs> it's pretty funny shit yeah i really liked that i really like the graphics in this as well The art style is really simplistic and it worked for the PlayStation 2 and I think even today it looks good and I can tell that they didn't change too much with this remaster. They didn't change too much besides making it HD 1080. It looks really good. It's 60 frames per second and that changes depending on the areas and the hardware that you're playing on. For me on the Switch, if my Katamari ball was huge and I was picking up all kinds of crazy like people, for example, they start moving their arms really spastically, I'd get a small drop. Besides that, the game and the presentation is really, really good. Good. I think a part of the reason why it can just perform with this many objects is just kind of the clever way that they go about masking these levels and how they separate them. When you're a smaller Katamari, there's bigger objects in your way. So the player won't be able to see that there's no small objects over there until they get bigger. And that allows for something like the PlayStation 2 to pump out these big objects and it makes a lot of room and space so that it just seems like it's running really smoothly when in fact 
fact, it just has a curtain there where you can't see how little the computer is actually doing. There's very little work that the computer will have to do. You might be blocked off by cones, but if you pick up enough tape decks or something, and then a radio, and then you pick up some pencils and shit, eventually you're large enough to pick up a cone. You roll right into the next level and everything's behind you. It looks really cool and it's really satisfying when you go from a tiny object, just picking up ants or something, to a house. Mm -hmm. And it's surprising how fast you can do that. But that's sort of the core of this game is how fast can you do that? So I want to ask you this question because it happened to me many times. Did you ever get frustrated in not picking up the items you needed in a certain amount of time? Yes. A couple times. And the main reason being is there's a timer and the level does not end until that timer ends. So let's say you realize that you're screwed like, I don't know, 13 minutes into a 15 minute level. You're just going to have to start all the way over again. And it becomes really irritating. Not only that, but sometimes your Katamari looks like it can pick up items, but you end up bumping into it instead of picking it up and you lose more items that way. And it, it's just a loss of progress that. I didn't really enjoy that much. I can relate, and I thought it was something that could be amended with like a checkpoint, but you don't have those in this game, and it's pretty true to its roots in that way. But I feel you on that same part where I'd try to roll up into something that I know I'm bigger than, I look bigger than it, but then I roll into like a street light, and I can pick that up. And then my ball is all oblong, and I'm rolling strange. But I did have one major issue that actually set me back only a couple times, but I knew it wasn't my fault. It wasn't like I wasn't picking them up. I was actually getting stuck in between between objects to explain the mechanic. If you hit something like a wall or surface that you can't pick up, you'll lose part of your ball. It'll just fall off and you can pick it up later. But I had a problem where I'd rolled into something that I couldn't pick up and then I was stuck. Yeah, and, and you so, just bounce between the two objects. Yeah, and all your objects are flying off and then you get small enough to get out of that spot, but now you can't even pick up the stuff that you drop because you're gonna be stuck again. The thing that I thought was most frustrating about that was that there is a button that you can press that lets your character jump up into the air. I don't understand why they didn't make it so that the Katamari could do that. Because if the Katamari could do that, then you'd be able to get out of those tough situations most of the time. You do get some cool things you can do with your Katamari ball. Like you brought up, you can jump around your ball. You can move around it differently. You can also charge it up by moving your analogs. Like like imagine you're just like shaking your fists or something. As you run or something. Yeah, or like you're running and that'll move the ball forward really fast. But that really doesn't get you out of a sticky situation that just gets you it across the Levels. Yeah, it could make it worse. I think while there are some frustrations with this game, most of the time I was just relaxed, just like rolling this thing around. I thought it was a lot of fun. You definitely could burn through it in a day or two days. It's about a 22 hour game. I'd put it in that ballpark, but it's something really fun to pick up and play every once in a while and maybe make some progress. Though the game, I would say it does reward you in playing back to back because the controls aren't like any other game that I've played before. You do kind of match master that ball rolling which sounds strange but you, you can you can master it yeah i get what you mean because if you were to walk away from this for like a week or two you might come back not really remembering how to even move and i agree with that it does reward you i think right now is when we're gonna get into spoilers the main thing I have to ask is just like, did you have any favorite moments in this game? Maybe not a specific moment. From the start of the game, you're in houses and you're picking up things under furniture. But when I got out into cities, that's where I felt like the game kind of took off because I really wanted to recreate what's on the cover and pick up whole towns. Like cows and shit. Yeah, yeah, just funny things like that. That was more satisfying. So those were my favorite moments when I was large enough to pick up a house. What about you? It's funny because I simultaneously hated and loved when you're getting really really big near the end of the game my favorite but in my opinion also the worst mission is the last one i actually really liked getting as big as you do and picking up giant octopus octopi whatever and um picking up like houses and these big kaiju looking monsters i really enjoyed that but that also was like a 30 minute level and i had to restart it a couple times because i fucking suck at video games so <laughs> that was one of my favorite levels too like i described being large enough to pick up a city was fun so that was a blast for me but i had some issues with it too my biggest issue was why now at the end of the game <laughs> I did i just get to have the most fun like i wish that we could have gotten to like picking up planets and yeah shit. that's what i thought i was in for but when i realized i was rolling up to make the moon i knew that this was the end of the game 
because my goal was insane. You know, most of the time you're making a ball that's like 10 to 20 meters or maybe 60. Your goal for the moon is 300 meters. And you just know it's the end state. It's the grand finale. Well, and they jump from 60 to 300 in a matter of a level. That was the most disappointing because you get to the largest size and you can see the whole map. And it really opens up and it gives you a sense of scale. But then you're like, where the fuck was all this shit this whole game? Because I'm seeing nuclear power plants and airports and all these crazy things that I could be doing, but I was stuck in like some small towns. It looks really nice in this small town. You get bigger and you realize this world is in turmoil. Yeah. There are <laughs> giant squids like eating people. Yeah, <laughs> tsunami islands. and there, there is probably a potential for like a super funny story, but... <laughs> The relationship between the dad and the son is pretty funny. Oh, yeah, with those two main characters. There's also, as something I want to bring up, there's this family. These cutscenes with the family, those are actually pretty hilarious. Like we explained earlier, you're collecting things to make the stars, and with the stars comes constellations, and so you're making different astrological signs and constellations, and every time you make an astrological sign, they have these little cutscenes, and they're kind of funny. <laughs> There's like this girl and she's, oh, I feel it. I feel the cosmos. And the mom never sees, like they're always seeing like, oh, look, there's a Katamari. And the mom is, what are you dumb kids talking yeah. about? And then your father, he's an astronaut, it turns out. And he's about to go to the moon, or not your father, but these kids and their father. He's about to go to the moon and they just call the mission off because the moon disappeared. <laughs> and no one seems too concerned. The father is just like, oh, the, you know, mission is not today. There's no moon. And Maybe that's why there were so many fucking tsunamis and shit yeah all those tsunami islands and yeah it's because the moon completely disappeared hey, i don't know that's a good theory maybe i don't know that's just a game theory <laughs> hey matt pat yeah i think something that i want to bring up is one of the most interesting things that i find about this game is not really the game itself but the creator now earlier in this year i played the game with tom which i thought was really interesting that also ends with the moon coming back and i thought that was really strange that's the same thing in katamari yeah it's the same thing in Katamari and then I had read up a little bit on Katamari before playing the game and he had stated that this was all supposed to be a statement on consumerism. I tried really hard to understand how it was a statement but I'm not quite sure. You know I never heard about that but I could see what he's saying. There's a few times where the king will say my earth really does have a lot of things and it will tell you what you've picked up the most of and name the stars after these things but I don't know if it's a positive or negative comment on consumerism. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I mean, the guy is just, just from his other games, like with Tom, he seems very positive all the time, but there are certain little things that I could see as negative in this game, like picking up a bunch of random shit for no reason. Yeah, just garbage is really what it is. Yeah, like you're like a massive hoarder. This is Hoarders the video game. Yeah, I wish it was like that in real life and not as depressing. <laughs> you know, I wish they'd just keep their shit in a ball, but instead it's <laughs> their whole house and I garage. I thought you were meaning that you wish you had a Katamari. <laughs> I kind of wish I had a Katamari. <laughs> it's like roll up all my shit. Yeah. <laughs> Well, would you recommend this game? Yeah, I would recommend it if you're playing by yourself. They do have a multiplayer mode, but... It's kind of tacked on. It's kind of tacked on, and it's more like a dual mode. You kind of reversing each other, and there's not the same progression that you're going to get out of the single-player game. So I'd recommend it to somebody that wants to play a single-player game. And I hate to do that, but I'd say probably on sale. Yeah, you know, I think I'd agree with you. Maybe like 20 bucks. Maybe. Yeah, 20. I think I paid 34 or something like that on a sale. And that's not too far off the main price, but I felt comfortable spending that, and I do feel like it was worth it. Yeah, I would say $20. I did enjoy it just because it's a strange experience. And if you're looking for anything like that has some deep mechanics, this is not the game that you want. But if you're looking for just like a fun, relaxed time, I think I would definitely recommend Katamari for around $20. There is a lot to do, even after you beat the game, though. Yeah, you can go through and collect what they call your cousins, and these are just like little guys that look like you 
few, but they're really funny looking. And I would say also that it's worth playing it because there's an online community for it, you know, on YouTube and speed runs and whatnot. And these guys seem like they have a lot of fun. Like I found a YouTube video that was just talking about this set of bananas and how strange these bananas are because if you pick a banana up, it counts as two bananas. And <laughs> Does it? Yeah, and they were getting so into it. And it was like, they're planning what they're gonna do with these bananas that count as extra bananas. And they were wondering why the programmers would leave this in the game despite it not being there in a previous title or something and to me that was just like these guys are actually having a lot of fun and so i think it's worth it to be a part of the community and just saying that you played the game and it, it's just humorous this is what the game does to you yeah you're obsessed with but you're obsessed with consumerism <laughs> We figured it out. That's it. The puzzle has been solved. <laughs> With that said, this is COG signing out. See you.